we're making satay, okay? Like I said, this is a scaled down version. I'm actually using lamb, okay? And, um, but you can use chicken. I used to actually use chicken. And yeah, where I was going with that whole bio thing was that um, when I started out with my food business in Sydney, I actually used to be a satay specialist. So I started out selling satay. In fact, I only sold satay for, for a while before I started expanding to other stuff. And then over the course of years and whatever, satay actually kind of took a back seat in my repertoire. But I did start out selling satays, okay? Chicken satay most uh, specifically. But uh, obviously they were on skewers and they would be cooked on charcoal and all that. But we're going to dispense of all that today, okay? Like I said, we're making a very, very simplified version of it. Uh, well, I thought, okay. So uh, in so far as the ingredients, Okay, one of the main things that I've switched out is galangal because, like I said, uh, in lockdown situations, in your average Australian pantry, I guess you may be a little bit challenged to find galangal, right? Um, so we're actually using ginger in the galangal. So galangal is basically something from the ginger family. There's actually frozen ginger. Uh, we're going to, oh, we've got the lamb over here. I've got some cucumber. Uh, there are going to be three main components that we're going to tackle today, okay? So we're doing this very rapidly and obviously I don't expect you to be able to get all this done in, within the hour because like I said, we're rushing. Uh, satay, look, typically someone actually suggested, Celia actually suggested I did satay a couple of weeks ago. I said, no, no, you can't do satay because it needs to marinate in the fridge overnight at least. You know, when I used to run it properly, I used to actually let it marinate for two nights in the fridge. Um, but I decided let's do this and also obviously you know being the you know I'm really a frustrated purist <laughs> okay regardless of what you'll say about all the shortcuts I take I'm very um, I guess a little bit more inclined to try to replicate the flavors as faithfully as I can so I don't believe generally in opening a can of sauce and pouring it into your food or whatever right so um, I, I wanted to actually have them on skewers but then I think it was Celia and someone else posted in the Jackie M uh, Malaysian Street Food Kitchen group. They posted a, basically a grilled satay without the skewer dinner. And I thought, oh, well, if it's doable for them, let's do this, okay? But what we are going to do, uh, let's talk about this. I've got a muslin bag here, okay? And like I say, every time I do this, I feel like I'm promoting other people's brands for no apparent reason. But this is just to help you be able to find this next time you go shopping, okay? This I pick up from Asian grocery stores. If you go to an Asian grocery store aisles, you might see these or something similar to them hanging on the shelves, right? What they are, these bags, they usually use them to put like Asian herbs or whatever in them. And typically you would want a double layer of this, okay? So there's a bag with a string over here. And this is what we're going to make is what we call nasi himpit, H-I-M-P-I-T. Nasi means rice, himpit means um, compressed rice, okay? It's kind of like, yeah, compressed rice. And I'm cheating a little bit here. <laughs> Uh, typically, back in my restaurant day, I would just use jasmine rice. So I've got some arboreal rice, and that's another thing that Celia mentioned as well that she uses. Uh, she she uses medium Australian medium grain rice, which is like you know, yeah, <laughs> it's not my favorite. And she said that works fine, you know. She said it's a good way to use up Australian medium grain rice. I think that's a damn fine idea. Um, but I don't have any Australian medium grain rice. But if you were to make this yourself at home, Australian medium grain rice over jasmine rice because it's cheaper, okay? And it, like, the, the nuance, the beautiful aroma of jasmine rice is really wasted on nasi himpit, okay? So save your money and get Australian medium grain rice, but in uh, absolute that, I'm using Spanish arboreal rice, and I don't know if it's actually going to turn out, but I have, it's been sitting in my pantry for at least a year, two years, and I'm not about to use it, so let's use it up for this exercise, okay? So we'll put this in this bag here, and look, um, just, where's my string? Okay, now I want to mention quickly that, I want to mention quickly that Nasi himpit compressed rice is something that um, is a little bit lost on a lot of Australians, okay? So if you're an Australian, you're following this at home, uh, I'll forgive you if you skip this step, okay? I know because, like I said, I used to own a restaurant and when I served compressed rice with my nasi lemak, these are these rice squares, okay? With your nasi lemak, the Aussies will leave them. They won't eat them, okay? And they'll ask instead for hot plain rice, okay? So they want boiled rice to go with their, like piping hot, fluffy boiled rice to go with their satays. The whole idea of eating like these uh, 
kind of like essentially rice cakes, right? Cold rice cakes at that is like, you know, unless you've lived in uh, in Malaysia for any length of time or whatever, you don't get the, 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 the point of it, okay? So I, I forgive you if you're gonna skip this, but if you're Asian, because all the Asians are asking you, are you gonna be making this? Yes, this is how we're going to do it, okay? This is how I used to do it at my restaurant. And also, by the way, nasi himpit means con compressed rice. In Malaysia, we would typically eat what we call ketupat. The idea is the same, it's compressed rice, but they're actually cooked in these little coconut, leaf bags okay you can imagine coconut leaves long and uh, thin you weave them into these little baskets these little beautiful baskets and then you put rice in them and then you tighten them up and then you boil them in water for hours and then you take them out and then you cut the coconut rice bag open and you get compressed rice in there that's called ketupa okay this is the same idea but absent the coconut leaves and all that so this is called nasi himpit so compressed rice and the way you do it and you look, typically you would put more rice in it, okay? And in fact, when I had my restaurant, I, I didn't use these muslin bags. I did sometimes, depending on how much I was making. But I would actually use, uh, what do you call it? Um, these um, special catering bags that will withstand high heat. And I'll put the rice in these bags, seal them up. Uh, well, I'll put the rice in the bags, um, vacuum the air out of it and seal it. And then I'll poke holes in them, all right? And in fact, nowadays you can actually buy um, these prepared like rice sachets with raw rice in them in these little plastic sachets with holes in them and you just throw it straight into your pot of water and you boil it until it expands and whatever okay so let's tie this up what you want is rice and you want to leave a little bit of a gap for it to be able to expand but not much okay depending on how much rice you put in typically you can like you know what i would do if i were using this bag if i were filling it up i would leave like a about an, an inch above it sort of thing to, to for it to be able to expand okay because like obviously if it's too tight you might risk actually popping the, the bag open okay but look we're, we're just kind of doing a quick little sample for you guys to get an idea of what we're trying to achieve here okay and then what you're going to do like I said, i'm going to double bag this and i'm going to actually just throw this into a second bag okay just to give it some sturdiness because i have known these to actually pop open if you've got something a little bit better and i thought i grabbed it i thought i grabbed a string yes i did and i didn't notice okay so a string would be better to tie it just to make sure it's secure and um here we go let me just take my gloves off there's a there's a bit of a story about my why i'm wearing gloves that uh I, I will save it <laughs> for private conversation. I was just telling my 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 my, <laughs> my business associate Paul uh, about what happened with my finger. But uh, okay, okay. So we've got this bag. Let's throw it into another bag. Okay, there's another muslin bag, much larger one, obviously. And we're going to actually let's see if we can secure this. And let's just throw it in some water. I hope this is boiling. Put some hot water here. Okay, so I've got this unit and we're going to talk about this unit here, okay? Like, uh, I, I posted this on social media a couple of weeks ago when it first was sent out to me. Uh, look at it, look at it, look at it, take a good look. And we're going to talk about it at the end of the session. Let's put this in here, okay? I'm basically using this as a, uh, basically to boil the, the rice with, and you want to boil it for about an hour, hour and a half, okay? So let's do this, let's turn up the temperature. Um, time. Okay, I'll just start. Okay. Um, uh, this is like literally my second time using it, so hopefully I, 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 I don't like reading manuals, but I'm assuming I'm using it right. But basically I've set it to, um, with the water and I'll put the bag of rice in it, and I've set it to cook for an hour at 100 degrees, okay? I might have to turn down the temperature a little bit, depending on how it works. But okay, so let's get on to, so we're making the rice, okay, that's the nasi him bit. And we are also going to be making the satay, okay? So next thing we're going to do is the meat and we're gonna dice this up okay now typically uh in malaysia our satay skewers are really skinny really small um this is what like i said i've got ginger onion and let's 
You know what? Let's do this. Okay. Okay, so this is my other device. <laughs> um, now, what we're going to do with the onion, uh, the onion and the garlic and the ginger, right, is we're going to actually use it for two things. We're going to use it for the satay marinade and we're also going to use it for the satay sauce, okay? The satay sauce as in the peanut sauce, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more. I want to try and kick this at, uh, off a little bit so that I don't end up standing around talking and not doing anything, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to peel the onion and I also mentioned in the list Spanish onion as a garnish um, as kind of like uh, one of the, uh, what do you call it, the trimmings to go with the satay that's if you're into like having onion, raw onion with your satay I'm not actually personally a big fan of eating raw onion with my satay so I don't have any Spanish onion myself, okay? So I won't hold it against if you don't um, but let's Peel this. Okay, now, like I said, we're gonna use this for both the peanut sauce and the marinade. Okay, so, but we want to first let's process the onion. And then once we take it out, we're going to process the garlic and the ginger. It's going to be loud. Okay, let's take it out. Now, what I used to do, okay, you see the onion? You notice, like, if you've been following my content for a while, you notice I always, not wine, but I always mention how much moisture there is like how much water content there is in these brown onions that I use for my cooking and how like if you were frying it as part of a spice paste I would suggest that you fry it without the oil first to kind of like help the, the juice evaporate now what I used to do back when I had my restaurant was actually I would kill two birds with one stone okay so you see the onion here you see all the moisture I would put this in a big giant rice bag okay you know those i mean if you're asian you'll know you buy these big bags of rice and they come in these kind of like weaved like plastic bags right these really super strong weave plastic bags i would process a whole bunch of onion i'll process like 20 40 kilos of onion right for all the curries that i cook as part of my business and then i would like put these pour these into these bags that these uh, plastic rice bags that are suspended in these big giant drums in my cool room and then over the course of a few hours as they're suspended in these drums right uh, I end up with a whole bunch of onion juice and this onion juice is what I use as part of my satay marinade okay and then this I use as part of my spice paste okay so that's a pro tip for you guys okay that's a Jackie M pro tip <laughs> which I should trademark because I don't see anybody else teaching that. Obviously, a lot of the stuff that I apply in terms of my cooking is basically stuff that I've just kind of like hacked. Essentially, is probably a not a particularly elegant word for it, but that's essentially what happens. You know, when you're running a business on the shoestring and you're hustling and you're time poor and whatever, you come up with all these kind of like ways to rig your <laughs> food production process to be able to kind of help you along okay so you see the onion juice obviously you don't have to do this um more typically um more typically you would just use the onion with the you know all crushed and in, in its like crushed form as is okay it's just like i said since we're using the same onion for two different things we might as well all right so You've got the onion juice here. Let's take out my gloves. Okay, so that's the onion juice. We're going to use it to marinate the satay in. And in the meantime, we've got the onion and the garlic, uh, sorry, the ginger and the garlic. Let's blitz this again. Okay, 
add uh, onion and ginger, garlic and ginger. I keep, oh, it's been one of those days. Spatula would be nice at this point too, but I don't have one on hand. Now, uh, insofar as the marinade is concerned, like I said, we're totally simplifying it. We're just using onion, ga um, garlic, in fact, just onion juice, garlic, and ginger. And then, uh, if you have it, lemongrass. In fact, really, you know, you really kind of need lemongrass for this, okay? so. The kind of lemongrass I'm using, this is actually minced lemongrass. If you live in Sydney or in Australia, or at least in the metro areas, you should be able to find minced lemongrass in its frozen form in the freezer section of your Asian grocery store, assuming it's half decent, okay? Oh, I'm not gonna annoy all these Asian grocery store owners who don't actually have minced lemongrass on hand. But this is kind of like an easy, again, you know, way to access Asian ingredients. If you don't have it, uh, you've seen me use lemongrass powder before, and I've warned you before as well, if you do use lemongrass powder, don't use that much equivalent in powder form, because I, I find the lemongrass powder I've come across to be extremely pungent, strong flavoured, okay? It almost gives your food a bit of taste if you even go, um, <laughs> like, you know, it's a little bit over the threshold. So generally, if I were to use lemongrass powder, I would only use like maybe one quarter or one third uh, one fifth of it um, in comparison to the fresh version, you know, if that even. But if I were using lemongrass powder here, I would probably just put in like a one teaspoon, one level teaspoon of it in here, okay? So we've got this, like I said, we're saving this for the sauce, okay? And the other ingredient, I know a lot of Asians, like Malaysians, they freak out at the mention of peanut butter in your satay sauce, and we're going to talk a little bit more about it in a bit. Okay, but let's, we've got these three here. We want sugar, we want two types of sugar. Now, um, I used to put brown sugar, I don't have any brown sugar around. I'm gonna put Malaysian brown sugar, Malaysian palm sugar. This is what it looks like, very different to Thai palm sugar. You know, this Thai palm sugar, for those of you familiar with Thai cooking, Thai palm sugar will be lighter in color, but that will work too, okay? So we've got soft brown sugar, it's fine. And I'm not measuring anything, but I think I put in the uh, amounts in the ingredients list. So those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, go, like I said, go and join my, <laughs> go look up on Facebook, Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen. That's where all the details are about my hangouts, my, my, my live podcasts, okay? Um, where I post the recipes, I, post, uh, I will post the recipes. Um, yeah, speaking of recipe, just comment recipe, please, if you want the recipe sent out to you. Uh, and I'll make sure it gets to you, all right? So this is Malaysian palm sugar. Now, with satay, as with a lot of different types of dishes, depending on whose recipe you're following, depending on which part of the Malay um, archipelago you eat your satay, they will be different, okay? The Indonesians at this point, they like to add kicap manis, which is sweet soya sauce in there. So if you want to do that, that might actually be a, quite an interesting twist to it. As a Malaysian, as someone who used to sell satay, I have never ever put kicap manis in my satay sauce, but like I said, you can. Okay, so a combination of brown sugar and white sugar, okay? This is quite a sweet dish. I have to warn you, satay, my satay at least. I, I keep telling you guys, I've got strong taste buds, so I'm not, uh, I'm not someone who's particularly subtle, right? So I like uh, strong flavors and all that sort of stuff. So we've got the white sugar, the brown sugar. We're gonna put some turmeric in here. This is just turmeric powder, right? And I put a bit of salt. I'll put a bit of chicken powder, okay? You don't have to put chicken powder, obviously. Uh, the reason I'm, <laughs> I'm really actually targeting the MSG in this chicken powder to kind of like bring out a bit of an extra oomph to my satay marinade, okay? So you can see this is gonna be quite pale. Like I said, if you add ketchup buddies uh, in here, it will kind of like make your satay look brown and a little bit more caramelized so 
uh, you can try doing that. Okay, look, so this is the meat and typically if I were actually skewering the satay, I'll cut them really small. And when I first started selling satay in Australia, and part of the reason I got into the whole food thing apart from just generally missing Malaysian food was that when I first came to Australia and I would do what a lot of Aussies do, at least in Sydney anyway, go and check out all the farmers markets and weekend markets and the food stalls there, there used to be a lot of students from China who would hustle and I mean Chinese you whatever you whatever else you say about the Chinese they're, they're good entrepreneurs right so all these uh, Chinese overseas students would be selling satay what they call satay at all these Australian weekend markets but their satays were nothing like the satay we knew in Malaysia they their satays were just basically big giant kebabs that you can pick up at any regular Australian butchers right and they'll be cut up into big chunks of meat and then they'll serve it, they'll grill it, and then they'll basically spread it with some peanut butter. It looks like peanut butter. It just looks like, you know, diluted peanut butter. It looked really gross, and I felt like they were just ruining the, <laughs> the food of my childhood. So I decided to make, make and sell satays, and that's how I started out. I was selling satays at weekend markets as well. But my satays, like, you know, to replicate what I grew up with, were really small, and the Aussies were complaining about how tiny my satay sticks were. Um, so it took me years to actually educate Australians that satay sticks are meant to be small, okay? But obviously over time, I've had to kind of like split the difference a little bit. So my satays will be a, a, a larger than what you typically find in Malaysia, but smaller, a lot smaller than what you would find at a lot of, you know, <laughs> a lot of other places, okay? So we're just dicing this up, right? And I think this will be enough. I want to save my last lamb steak for something else later. Okay, so you marinate this. Like I said, typically you would do it overnight, okay? But let's just let it do its thing for the next 30 minutes or so. And then we're going to cook it, okay? Okay, you got it? Uh, now, I'm going to take this out because you know what, I kind of spaced off on this. We're going to make some chili paste, okay? So typically, the Malaysian satays, you would, uh, if you're eating satay in Malaysia, you get like a bowl of satay, satay sauce, peanut sauce, and then you get a spoon of like uh, chili paste that's very oily. So we're going to uh, replicate that as well. But let me just get something of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil this as well, okay? And again, guys, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, obviously, while I'm live streaming, I can't actually uh, respond to you. I can't check for comments that efficiently. So it's most likely I will miss your comments, but I will come back and address them later. So what I'm doing is I've just put the dry, these dried chilies. I've shown you guys these before. This is what they look like. Uh, Asian grocery store for those of you not familiar these will be labeled as large chilies large dried chilies okay so we're going to put a bit of water in here and we're going to boil it obviously you don't need my fancy gizmo to be able to do this you just throw it into a saucepan add some water cover it and boil it okay or just bring it to a boil and then like for once it starts boiling just Leave it for 30 seconds on boil, then turn off the heat, leave it covered, let it sit for 10 minutes, okay? Okay, so that's going. We've got the sardé, alright, so again, like I said, we're using peanut butter, okay? And I know, like I said, a lot of Malaysians are gonna scream bloody murder for the use of peanut butter in this but partly also like I said we're keeping this lockdown theme right I don't want you going trying to hunt for peanuts and then trying to roast it and trying to whatever else you do with it okay so we've got peanut butter and this is crunchy peanut butter at that okay now um, the reason why a lot of Malaysians I think are resistant to the idea of adding peanut butter to their peanut sauce is because we've seen how Aussie cooks use peanut butter to make peanut sauce, okay? What they do is they 
they what they do is they throw some peanut butter into a food, uh, into a blender and then they add some sugar and whatever rubbish and then they blitz it and they call that peanut sauce. That's not peanut sauce, okay? So we're going to do something different. What we're going to do, we're going to pretend, because peanut butter is in, its, in essence, it's just ground peanut, right? It's ground peanuts with butter in it. So there's nothing particularly wrong about the content of a uh, peanut butter and in particular crunchy peanut butter so i'm just heating up this pan here peanut butter my clothes are falling apart <laughs> just hang on a sec <laughs> but yeah again guys say hello let me know where you're watching from so i can uh, respond afterwards and remember share it out to people that you think will find this helpful and don't forget i go live here once a week um where are we I go live here once a week. Someone's saying they can't log in. You don't have to log in. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, like I said, guys, if you can help other people along, just uh, let's have a look. Hey, just click on the link above. Okay. Yeah, help others along so they can find my content. Every time I live stream, over the last, this is my what, week five? Every time I live stream, oh, week four, week five, I've lost track now. I get people contact me left, right and center saying, hey, how do I watch you? I can't watch you and I couldn't find you and, and that sort of stuff, right? So it is a little bit frustrating for those people, uh, for everyone concerned. So if you can help everyone along, share this out so they can find us, okay? Like I said, stick around till the end because I have something to say about this thing here that everyone mistook for a thermal mix when I posted it on social media uh, a week or so ago. Alright, so we're heating this up. We want uh, the, remember this, this is a mixture of the crushed onion, the garlic and the ginger. And to that we're going to add some lemongrass, again, the frozen lemongrass. All this gives texture to your satay sauce, okay? So let's throw in some oil. Um, we're just heating this up now generally remember how I always say uh, don't put in the oil first throw in the onion and then fry it up till all the moisture evaporates but remember we squeezed out a lot of the moisture so it's not that big a deal okay the other thing I want to mention about sade sauce is that it should actually look oily okay and finally one thing uh, you know give me any topic on Malaysian food I have 50 million things to say about it so I'm a little bit scattered if you don't mind but I find that a lot of Australians they confuse the when you say satay they think of the sauce okay so I've had Aussies ask for uh, some rice and satay and to me to a Malaysian it means you want some rice with some skewered meat okay but to the Aussies they think they're asking for rice with some peanut sauce okay guys we don't call this satay, all right? We call this satay sauce or we call it peanut sauce, all right? The satay are the skewers, this is the sauce, all right? So I, I used to, like I said, because I sold, I've been <laughs> selling Malaysian food and a lot of uh, my business has involved face-to-face -face selling because I started out at markets doing pop-ups and that sort of stuff. So I'm cooking while people are actually ordering from me. So I know how people think. I know the kind of stuff they ask for, all right? But yeah, this is not the satay, the satay or the skewers, this is the satay sauce or the peanut sauce, okay? So let's throw in the, the spice mix here. And we're going to fry this up till it's brown, okay? So this is what a lot of Australian recipes miss when they use peanut butter as the base for their peanut sauce, okay? They miss what we call the spice paste or the rumpa, okay? And what we're doing now, another Malay word of the day is tumis. T for Tom, U-M-I-S, tumis. This is to, to fry it up, okay? So Australians, when they do peanut, uh, peanut sauce, they don't, a, a lot of the time, they don't fry it. They skip the whole process. They pour this into a blender and add some seasoning and they call it peanut sauce. That's not damn peanut, uh, <laughs> peanut sauce, all right, guys? Um, so you want to fry this up and throw in the lemongrass again 
If you don't have lemongrass at this point, that's not that big. If, only, if you only have enough lemongrass to either use in the marinade or in the sauce, use it in the marinade and skip it in the sauce, okay? But let's just put it in here a little bit. And obviously, I'm using pre-minced lemongrass. If you've got fresh lemongrass, you want to cut it and then process it in the food processor or pound it till it's minced, okay? Because using whole lemongrass stems or even using sliced lemongrass isn't going to do much with your meat, okay? If you're going to marinate it. So again, we're frying this up. You can add more oil if you want. And like I said as well, I'm smoking up really badly here. I hope I don't set off the smoke alarm. Um, also, if you want, um, you can put the chili in here. When I did it for my business, um, certainly when I was selling it at markets and all that, I didn't put, uh, I didn't have a separate chili paste for my peanut sauce. I just put some chili flakes in here, all right, to make it slightly spicy, but not that much, okay? So it's up to you if you want to put some chili in here. And let's add a little bit more oil, because like I said, typically this is oil. Now, the other thing I want to mention, I was uh, the other reason why I was slightly reticent about doing this recipe was because a lot of people nowadays, especially in Australia, are allergic to peanuts, okay? But um, I'm still trying to find, and I know it exists because, uh, like, as with a lot of things uh, in Malaysia, um, let's pour in some oil. As with a lot of things in Malaysia, um, our food evolves, right? And satays are one of those that have evolved, okay? So back in the day, they would use peanuts in their peanut sauce. But uh, one time, my dad, because we would still keep in touch with Malaysia through uh, semi-regular trips back, my dad said he came across peanut sauce where they didn't use peanuts in the sauce because commercially peanuts were getting so expensive, right? So what they actually put in lieu of peanuts were crushed crackers, okay? So maybe that's something you want to try at home if you're allergic to peanuts, right? You might want to try the different types of crushed uh, crackers in there to give it that crunchy texture. I haven't tried it myself, um, but you know, if I do, I'll let you know how it turns out. But again, like I said, maybe that's something you want to attempt as well, okay? So we want to fry this as usual in the, uh, in cooking book, in uh, recipe book parlance, they'll say you fry it till the oil separates, okay? And what that means is that essentially you want to caramelize the mixture here, the onion, and beyond, okay? I'm, I'm, like I said, I am actually seriously concerned about the amount of smoke this is generating because I have been known to set off a smoke alarm. So if you just excuse me for two seconds, I'm gonna run over to my balcony and open the balcony door. All right, back. So this particular step, if you're Malaysian, hopefully you would know this. I'm surprised how a lot of Malaysians actually use a lot of shortcuts in their kitchen by buying a lot of these things, right? They, they buy curry paste, they buy curry sauces and all that. Um, guys, if you know how to do this, this is like 80% of Malaysian cooking. <laughs> Malaysian curry or spice related cooking involves frying these three ingredients, okay? Onion, garlic and ginger. Uh, lemongrass, you know, one chili, you know, it's basically just different combinations of spice blends, and then you just fry it, fry it till it's browned, and then you add other stuff, and voila, you're a, you're an expert Malaysian cook, all right. <laughs> and like I said, guys, if you just missed the start of my broadcast, don't forget to create a, a free special Facebook group for those of you who don't want to miss any of my live streams. Okay, it's called Jackie M's. Malaysian street food kitchen. I had to think about this because I've got so many, uh, so many um, <clears throat> online assets floating around. So Jackie M's Malaysian street food kitchen, and you'll find it by going to bits, uh, this bit.ly link, bit.ly, bit.ly slash msfa in capital letters, M for Mary, S for Sally, F for Freddy, A for Apple hyphen group g-r-u g-r-o-u-p lowercase okay so look for that send a join request and this is where we hang out and in fact speaking of hanging out you're a member of that group we are going to have a our first ever virtual zoom hangout in the group 
in a few hours so I look forward to seeing you and my co-founder Paul is going to be in as well and you get to meet uh, the two of us and would love to meet you guys and find out a little bit more about your food journey okay and for those of you <laughs> I'm giving another plug here while this is cooking for those of you who are actually um, as uh, food business owners or aspiring food business owners people who want to make money from their food pattern I have a separate group for that that's called food fame okay food uh, so if you look up my profile for food fame uh, and answer join request that we're gonna have a hangout there tonight as well okay and again that's a community of people all over at this point all over the world but primarily Australia New Zealand and Malaysia and Singapore um, and we talk about like food from the point of view of business okay okay let's add a little bit more oil this is generally the most time consuming process of a lot of Malaysian cooking that's why what we're going to do Um, what I would typically do to help this along because what takes the longest to cook is the onion okay trying to brown the onion so sometimes I cheat by instead of using a hundred percent fresh onion I might split the difference and use commercial fried shallots okay so this is something you can pick up at Asian grocery stores again again I'm not getting paid to endorse them or anything like that uh, look for fried shallots or fried onion. Fried onion typically, if you look at the ingredients list, a fried onion will say it contains uh, onion oil and cornstarch or flat corn flour, right? Uh, whereas if you look at the ingredients list of a packet of fried shallots, it will just say oil and uh, oil and shallots. Okay, so insofar as the purity of the product, shallots are better, but they do cost more as well. Okay, it's something to keep in mind. Because onion, if it's got cornstarch in it, it's already pre-fried for you. But what happens when you add it into your food, the starch um, gets released into your food. So your food might end up looking a little bit starchy, okay? So that's that can actually work uh, when you're making peanut sauce, okay? That might actually work because it helps, it helps thicken the sauce, essentially. Instead of you having to manually like uh, add some cornstarch into your sade sauce. It helps thicken it, but uh, in some other dishes, it might just end up making your curry taste like you know those suburban Chinese restaurant type curries that look like they're just starchy gravy. You know what I mean? All right, this is looking good. Let's throw in the peanut butter. I need a spoon, so again, give me a second. That's our chili, so let's turn that off. Okay, peanut butter, crunchy peanut butter. And obviously, if you've got uh, if you've got peanuts, use peanuts. Okay, if you've got peanuts, you've got the time to actually roast the peanuts. What I used to do in my restaurant was I would deep fry the peanuts. You can roast them. Roast them will take roasting will take longer. Let them cool, and then you crush them in the blender, the food processor. And we're going to add water as well here. Okay, remember the purists among us. We are doing lockdown cooking emphasis on lockdown which means quick and easy uncomplicated ingredients hence why we're using peanut butter okay we're using uh, crunchy peanut butter like I said and I'm not measuring anything but if you've got a copy of my ingredients list which is again like I said guys best bet Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen look it up and um, you'll find everything there okay and also I'll, I'll be posting the recipe later on so if you want a recipe comment now say recipe please and we will sort you out so we've got this going we're gonna add other seasoning to this first of all salt so the peanut sauce is actually vegan right just as an FYI obviously if you want to make a vegan satay there are a few different ways you can do this 
I do run a <coughs> coaching community at a very, 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 in my opinion, reasonable entry point. Okay, I don't want to mention the price because the price is going up soon. <laughs> right? But if you want to look up my Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Academy, uh, that's my coaching community and it's just a monthly subscription. Like I said, very, 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 very cheap at the moment because we only just launched. Um, but if you're interested in learning from me directly in a structured format, right? None of this kind of like uh, <laughs> lockdown, quick and easy, uh, simplified cooking, but you're actually learning from me and some of the recipes you'll be learning will be actually recipes from my restaurant. Um, so we've got that. Uh, we're going to add some tamarind, okay? Tamarind is the souring agent. If you don't have tamarind, squeeze some lemon juice into this. That will be fine. Again, remember, lockdown cooking. Now this tamarind is in a jar. More typically, most Malaysians, because a lot of Malaysians, like I said, I know guys, I'm not, I'm not dissing you because I was like that. When I first came to Australia, I didn't know how to cook all this. I got to figure it out. And because I knew a certain way of like the, um, the older generation doing things, I came along and I tried to replicate the way they did it. Right? But there are a lot of shortcuts nowadays that I feel, I tend to feel that Mal uh, Malaysians, Asians doing um, cooking from the food of their home countries, they are not aware of. So they still apply these old style ways of cooking or producing food in a country where the ingredients may not be available. And also not just that, the ingredients may be actually not the best options you know, for those recipes, right? Um, so in trying to replicate things faithfully, they end up spending all weekend in the kitchen to produce something um, that, in my opinion, could be done a lot more efficiently and a lot more cheaply, okay? So that's another reason why you should join my Malaysian Street Food Academy, okay? So I teach you all this sort of stuff. And like I said, I learned it the hard way because as someone who had to learn everything when I came to Australia, because my parents stopped doing this, uh, the hawker food after they moved on to other food-related businesses in Malaysia, but um, they never saved their recipes for for us to learn. They're all lost forever, okay? That's part of the reason why I'm passionate about starting my Malaysian Street Food Academy and my Malaysian Street Food Kitchen, which is the free group, um, is to help preserve the legacy of my parents and all these other hawkers in that part of the world. Let's taste this. Not bad, right? Let's put a little bit more sugar. No, salt. A little bit more salt. And yeah, as I was talking about the tamarind, tamarind concentrate in a jar, right? Asian grocery stores, a lot of these tamarind concentrate tend to be from Thailand, right? So look for them and what it is, it's a tamarind that's already been extracted for you. So you just pour it straight from the jar. Um, but like I said, most Malaysians typically would be looking for tamarind pulp, right? And that, that's fine as well. You've got the extra time. You buy a block of tamarind pulp, you've got to cut it out, you've got to boil it in water. Simmer it till it turns into a pulpy, soft form, and then you strain it through a strainer, uh, and that produces tamarind concentrate. Okay, but if you want to save time, you want to do this in a hurry, you don't have time to do all that, just buy a, a bottle of tamarind concentrate. And again, different brands of tamarind concentrate come in different levels of concentration. That's nothing you got to keep in mind as well. That's why I don't like to give exact measurements to a lot of my recipes because I think that people. A lot of Westerners, guys in particular, are very fixated on measuring things to the nth degree, right? They think that cooking is a science. Come on, guys, get over it. Um, because nothing is a fixed uh, science, okay? Like, if you want to talk science, you know, even your the humidity in the air and the, you know, whatever else will affect, uh, the, the kind of pan you use will all affect your, your outcome, all right? So don't get stuck on measuring things, on, like, uh, timing things down exactly to the nth degree. That's one of the... Uh, cooking advice I would give you but uh, like I said different brands of tamarind concentrate will come in different levels of concentration some will be more sour than others okay um, so if it's more sour use less if it's less sour use more that's basically it okay let's taste this I think it tastes pretty damn good let's just add a little bit more sugar because like I said strong taste buds um, but essentially this is actually good to go. If you want to thicken it up, like I said, you can add a little bit of uh, fried shallots. We're not going to do that because in my opinion, this is fine, okay? It does not need any more kind of like messing around with. But let's put this aside. That's our peanut sauce. And the other thing I want to mention about this is that 
as it cools down, it will thicken up some more. Okay, so if it looks a little bit runny to you now, don't stress out. It will thicken up. Um, but if you want it thicker, yeah, by all means, just reduce it. Add some tapioca cornstarch plus water and add to it if you want, but it doesn't need it in my opinion. Okay, so that's my peanut sauce. And we are going to make the chili paste, okay? So again, these chilies, we're boiling in here. We're just gonna blend this into a paste. Again, this is gonna be allowed. another pan and we want a lot of oil for this and if you're just joining me say hello let me know where you're watching from okay okay so we've got the blended last chilies and just private message me if you can't find <laughs> stuff if you can't find a recipe or you've got any questions about it just private message me i actually look uh for those of you obviously i've been online for 10 years now right and i used to be really super active online and then i took a little bit of a break the last three years and i was hiding in other parts of the internet that are a little bit more obscure i guess um different crowd but i'm back here now Because I realize a lot of uh, people who cook my food are actually here in on, on Facebook land and that sort of stuff. Okay. So just some waste here. We're just gonna again just try and like help it to release some of that a little bit. Um, this chili, remember, I use big chilies. What they call big chilies or large chilies in Malaysia, really. And also at your Asian grocery store, if you're looking for these dried chilies, you see how dark a color it is. Okay, now what I've noticed, I was just at Woolies the other day. I saw that, like in this day and age of kind of like grab and go meals, they had uh, some what they label as Malaysian laksa uh, on the shelf at Woolies, Malaysian laksa soup in the chiller section. And the laksa, like I said, I always complain to you guys, right? The, I'm very going to be very politically incorrect, okay? Because I, I say, I, I use words that people find offensive. But white people don't know how to make laksa correctly a lot of the time, all right? Because your laksa is not meant to look yellow, all right? Your laksa is not a yellow Thai curry, okay? Uh, and that's what I see even like some Australian celebrity chefs when they attempt laksa, they end up looking yellow. You know why, what they're doing wrong? They're not using this, okay? This, look at how deep and dark the color is. Okay, this produces the red hue that you get in laksa and a lot of dishes. And absent that, your whatever it is you're cooking is just going to look like a really mild yellow color. If you use the wrong type, there's also the small chilies which are bright, uh, bright red, right? Um, the small chilies are like stratospherically spicy. All right, and when you use that in a laksa, you can only use a, like a tiny little teaspoon unless you want to blow the roof of your mouth off. And then because you're putting only a tiny amount of the pigment, the red pigment from the chili pigment in your laksa, it ends up looking yellow, okay? So this is what you want. You want lots and lots of this big chilies. They produce this really deep, dark red hue in your curries, in your laksa soup and all that, okay? Again, if you want to learn more about my cooking, go and join me. Join my Malaysian Street Food Kitchen, which is my free group. Or join my cooking academy if you're really serious about learning to cook. For, like I said, a next to nothing price at the moment, monthly. Join my Malaysian Street Food Academy. You get two new lessons a week. And you also get me going live in that group exclusively to do a special lesson every week. Q&A lesson, doing a demo, and then once a month we do a full-on masterclass where I teach you something really in-depth, right, from start to finish. Okay.
this could have been like more puree but because of the heat in the blender it didn't blend it as well as I would like okay but you get the idea this is how you produce the chili paste that you spoon over your over your peanut sauce okay depending on how spicy you want it you want to boost the heat level you can add um, you can actually flakes you can actually like uh, chili powder and all that sort of stuff in there so we've got that now we're gonna cook the sade okay let's turn this on again typically in Malaysia you would cook this you would skewer this you know what let me just um, just humor me a little bit I'll show you how to skewer sade because a lot of people don't know how to do this properly okay but I'm not going to do it for all of them I just want to show you the technique for skewering sade that is lost on a lot of people that's why they find it such hard work. It is hard work, but it doesn't need to be as hard as it is. So you want to do this properly. Now, the other thing I want to mention, back in the day when I was selling satays, I was actually, I, I actually use a combination of heat beets, you know, Australian like barbecue heat beets, and also charcoal. But you know what, in Malaysia, the charcoal they use for grilling the satay is a different type of charcoal to what you can get here in Australia. Okay, so all this, all these little nuances will actually come into play um, when you try and like uh, attempt to cook Malaysian food. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is cut us a little bit of slack. <laughs> I know that someone has been selling Malaysian Malaysian food and I feel for all, everyone else who's ever owned a Malaysian food business anywhere in the world right the, our worst critics are our own fellow country people and they will just say oh this isn't how you know and a lot of things like I said come into play because of ingredients availability you might not be able to find certain ingredients in Malaysia and um, you know and, and all that sort of stuff right and also the rules about like being able to cook and sell food is different in different countries as well so you might say oh you know I love how they did everything like out in the open air and all that sort of stuff in Australia like you know there are health regulations that are a little bit tighter <laughs> so like I said next time you visit your uh, Malaysian your, your local Malaysian restaurant cut them a little bit of slack just take this into account not to say that you're gonna um, not call them out if they try and like pull the wool over your eyes by making something that's inedible but what I'm saying is that you know things do uh, do come into play that you may not necessarily be aware of all right skewering sade okay no so I've just got this pan here what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of oil here I should probably use a brush all right just hang on okay so we're, we're, grill we're pan frying this but typically you would grill this on a barbecue charcoal barbecue and to skewer the sade right you would typically you see the meat here what a lot of people do they stick it up like this okay that's wrong because it's loose and then they, they do it like this and the problem is that you've got exposed sticks along here and they're not held properly because they're all like you're, you're skewering it through its thickest part okay what you want to do is just kind of like flatten this out right you want and if you can imagine a typical uh, Malaysian satay grill like a hibachi sort of thing um, the way the uh, charcoal is spread out you're going to find that the heat will be strongest in certain parts of the grill okay so typically the heat will be lower at the edges so um, to compensate for that you want a thinner piece of satay oh, you know, let's turn this down a little bit all right, so you want the thinnest part, the smallest chunk of the satay down here, and you want to skewer it along the thinnest part of the meat, okay? And then you want to run the skewer along the length of it. That's how you hold it in place, okay? You don't want any dangling bits of meat hanging around, right? You see, this is all firm. And the other thing, if you're using a satay grill, you don't want any exposed skewer at the end okay so skewer it like this right so that's how my satays used to look okay they don't fall apart and if you've got this like this or you've got bits of stick showing like this when you go on the charcoal grill the, 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 the flames are going to burn through this and break your sticks okay and you don't want that obviously and also if you've got the tip exposed the flame burns through it okay so you get like a scorch bit at the end and when people are eating it they have trouble pulling the meat out of the skewer all right so that's my kind of like two second guide to skewering sardines next time you want to attempt this but let's pan fry this
and leave the juices in the marinade here, okay? I have this compulsion to clean as I go along, so when I see oil, oil splatter, I get a little bit freaked out. Uh, let me get my tongs if you don't mind. being super professional all right so let's flip this over what you want to do with the chili as well add a little bit of salt to it just make it a little bit more interesting all right a little bit of salt as i was saying okay So this is like kind of like uh, grilling steak a little bit and like I said if you're Australian and you don't want to eat the whole cold compressed rice thing you can just cook some regular boiled rice what we used to do in my restaurant like I said I gave him the option like when I realized the whole compressed rice nasty him fit thing wasn't actually taking off among the Aussies, I would give them the option either like boiled rice or compressed rice and boiled rice to me in my restaurant was actually coconut flavored boiled rice okay so that's another thing that we can talk about in another broadcast but that's just like Malaysian coconut rice with your satay okay so while this is cooking there's nothing, I mean, most Aussies will be familiar with just like grilling meat, okay? So whether you do this on a pan like this or on one of those uh, uh, grills or whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's move this away. What we're going to do is uh, cucumber, all right? So back in the day, my restaurant, let me actually, you know, just get some banana leaf. And let me just get a plate and I'll get a fresh knife. use Spanish onion and again people were just like not eating it okay and the other thing I want to mention is the amount of sugar you put in this marinade will affect how it cooks okay if you put too much sugar in this it's gonna actually like you know because sugar burns at a lower temperature so you might find that you might uh, burn the sardes more easily okay and the other thing we used to do in my restaurants as well is like we were really like you know if we needed to cheat we would actually steam the sardes okay and then when people order it what we do we we'll pull out like one of these flame torch things and we'll just scorch it to give it that um that scorch look a little bit okay we're not going to do that we're cooking this from scratch today Just put a little bit more oil on this oh actually let's see how we go and in malaysia right what they sometimes did if you were using like lemongrass stems you guys know what lemongrass look like right uh, they're these long stems and you would use the bottom for like for the lemongrass mint and whatever but the rest of it will be like this really long fibrous stiff stick what you can do is just smash it down and then dip it in oil and as it, the sartes are cooking use the the lemongrass stem as an oil brush right 
And then what another thing what you can do as well if you want is actually coat this with coconut milk. Speaking of which, some versions of satay sauce actually contain coconut milk, mine does not. Okay, anything that contains coconut milk will actually, I mean, everybody likes coconut milk, right? Um, I do, but um, it will reduce the lifespan. It will make it a little bit more volatile, especially if you were selling this like I did outdoors and stuff like that, and you, you want a big giant pot of peanut sauce. Um, having something like coconut milk in it is like, you know, will we'll make it a little bit more volatile and maybe more prone to actually going off. Okay, that's something to keep in mind if ever you were to attempt this. But yeah, like I said, with uh, sate skewers, you know, there are people who do actually smother the sate stick with, with, with coconut milk. Okay, I don't do that. Okay, um, but yeah, if you use a, a lemongrass stick and use it as a, an oil brush, it will actually impart some more lemongrass flavor to your sate. Okay. Okay, this is pretty much done. Let's turn this off. Now, uh, the sate, uh, the cucumber, typically in Malaysia, what we, I hope you can see this over here. What we would do at our restaurant is cucumber in Malaysia, typically if you're eating it with sate, you don't slice it thin, okay? You cut it into chunks. Okay, so there'll be like chunky bits like this. Right, we've got this, get a plate. Okay, so we've got this here. This, and if you've got some uh, Spanish onion, you'll have like, again, you'll kind of cut it into thin chunks, all right? Now, this here, let's have a look and see how it's doing. Okay, so this has been cooking for 45 minutes. I want it to cook a little bit longer. So this is not quite ready, but you get the idea. I just wanted to actually quickly show you how it looks, okay? So there's a bag of rice that's been compressed. And why did I do it this way, okay? Just back to my point, because apparently I lose my train of thought a lot. Um, what I see a lot of people do when they make nasi himpe, compressed rice, is that they cook the rice normally in a rice pot or uh, in a rice cooker or whatever. And then they try and compress the rice after it's cooked, okay? And what they do, they might put it in like a baking tray and then they'll put a lot of weight on it to try and force it. But you know the difficulty with that is that the rice, once it's cooked, it's already expanded and you're basically trying to stuff it back into like, uh, you know, to make it like hard and compressed, okay? You're making your work a lot harder and it's not going to produce the result that generally you want to achieve, okay? So the way you do it, what I do here is that you basically boil the rice and you're forcing it to, to, to cook in a very small space. So you've got to, you, to pre-compress, okay? So I made this earlier, okay? I, I try not to do this, I did this what I did earlier, but I did do this earlier, okay? So this is my other bag of rice that was cooked in a bag, okay? And this is what it looks like, okay? So you can see, okay, so this is my big giant nasi himpit, okay. I, I kept it in the fridge because I made it yesterday. But typically you want to actually like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is your nasi himpit. Right, look at how much more himpit, <laughs> more compressed it is, as opposed to, like I said, doing it the way I see a lot of people, a lot of recipes teach you to do it, okay. Again, like I said, you're meant to eat this cold, guys, uh, to the Aussies among us. <laughs> okay, so you cut them into squares like this, right? That's your rice. That's your grilled meat. Okay. And that's your peanut sauce. Some of your chili oil. Okay, voila. I know it doesn't look that great because it's getting dark outside and everything looks like, but you get the idea, all right? Those of you who've eaten satay, you'll know this is how satay is meant to look, absent the skewers, right? So let's try this. 
So what you want to do with the other bag, like I say, boil it for at least an hour, okay? Hour 15 is, even, this, this actually cooks for an hour and 15, but this is a bigger chunk, right? So this was again, like I did, the way I did it exactly, just more rice because this was a bigger muslin bag. And I just boiled it for like an hour and 15 and I let it cool down. And after I let it cool down, you, you, you can't open it up right away, okay? You can't eat it right away. You want to let it cool down completely before you can actually cut it up like this, okay? So that's the nasi him bit. Uh, let's try the peanut sauce. Okay. Let's try the meat. Perfect. Okay. So what do you think? <laughs> That's the sauté. If you want the recipe, say recipe please and I will get it to you one way or the other. If you are currently on my email list, you will get the recipe. Hopefully, look. Those of you who are already on my email list, I've got to warn you. I warned you guys a couple of months ago that I was switching to a different email system. And guess what? I'm switching to a third email system. So you may actually get some cross wires insofar as the kind of content you're getting from me. But at this point in time, if you're on my email list, you most likely will be getting a copy of this uh, recipe sent out to you during the week, next week. Um, but like I said, just to be sure, just comment recipe, please, because I want to make sure that I don't miss out on any, like I said, because we've got three separate email databases at this point and it's a little bit hard to kind of like coordinate everything properly um but your best bet like i said always is to join my free facebook group uh, jackie m's malaysian street food kitchen that's where all my live streams are that's where all the content is so you can't miss it um and finally this thing all right so i've spoken to the um the supplier of this. What is this? This is basically like a thermomix, but it's not. Okay, so it's a multifunction uh, device that blends that processes what you saw me do in the thermomix earlier. It will do here as well, and also like you know, it can steam, it can process, it can cook for you. So you saw me stick um, the temperature and the time and all that here. Um, so you can actually cook something like, you know, do what I did here or cook other. So you can cook curries in there if all you want. Um, but I've spoken with the manufacturers. They've offered one of these to one of you guys. Okay. So I was still working out the details, but like I said, your best bet if you want to <laughs> make sure you don't miss out on your opportunity to win one of these things here, um, is to again, uh, make sure you join my free Facebook group, Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food Kitchen. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. This actually ran a little bit over time, but thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in my next broadcast. All right. Thank you guys. Ciao.